So thank you for your time, everyone. Uh, I'm Omar Rahim, the CEO of a company called Energy Mine. Um, so as the introduction said, uh, we're really interested in the incentives behind particularly energy saving. So we're based in Manchester in the UK. Uh, I'm not going to spend too long talking about the company. I really want to spend a lot of time talking about incentive mechanisms. Um, Probably my talk's going to be a little bit different in that I'm not a programmer, I'm not a developer uh, by background. I'm an economist uh, who spent uh, many years trading for big utilities and, and oil companies back uh, way back when, 15 years ago. So I'm really interested in uh, using this technology to really try and uh, understand uh, the incentives that would create the right atmosphere to get people to care about saving energy. Brief introduction. Um, what we do right now is we help very large corporates manage their energy. So we're in the B2B space. So we help businesses across the world um, trade energy and, and save energy uh, by really looking in a granular detail at their consumption. So again, on the challenges, it's been covered many times today already, so I'm not going to go too heavily uh, in the kind of challenges that we face. But I think we all know that the problem we're trying to solve is absolutely huge and it needs a cooperation of these big three areas, the public sector, the private sector, and academia itself. So I'll talk to you a little bit more, I'll come to a little bit more on what we're doing, but generally I wanted to, to mention the ethos at Energy Mine is that we have got the formula wrong as a society to incentivize people to save energy. For decades, we've tried lecturing people. We've tried showing them pictures of different parts of the world. We've tried showing them the, the statistics of climate change. And we've tried lecturing people to say, look, what you're doing is wrong. You know, you're polluting the environment. Why don't you care about the environment more? And it doesn't work. And quite frankly, we do not have the time as a society to continue in that approach. You know, changing human behavior is one of the hardest things to do in any field. So for us to try and get the general population to try and care enough about climate change to move fast enough is an impossible task with the current approach. What we need to do is we need to appeal to human nature. And that human nature we call what's in it for me. Now my background is, you know, I, I, I'm a commodities trader by background. So I could tell you a thousand stories about trading floors up and down Europe. I'm not going to do that. Um, but essentially what motivates people is what's in it for me. Why should I do this thing? So we want to make the argument about reducing energy demand, reducing CO2, um, tackling climate change, not about the environment, not a moral argument. We want to make a financial argument for that. So what we're doing in our, in our small part of the world uh, is a project called Energy Token. So Energy Token tries to address just this. Um, it's a blockchain-based token, a standard ERC-20 built on the Ethereum blockchain. And what it does, it rewards energy-saving behavior, meaning if you save energy in the workplace, if you take public transport, uh, you get rewarded a token. And then you can then spend that token within an ecosystem of uh, primarily public sector, but also private goods um, with our partner of vendors. So what we're doing here is we're almost trying to get people to reduce their energy demand by stealth, by saying, um, okay, well, we're going to pay you to save your energy. The obvious question I get asked is, okay, well, who's paying for it? Ultimately, somebody has to pay to redeem the token. So you've got to align those incentives uh, where the person accepting the token is incentivized uh, for subsidizing the, the energy saving. So I'll talk you through the journey of a token that will hopefully make a, a little bit of sense. Um, so we're speaking to transport operators uh, across the globe. Um, so we're speaking to the uh, local governments and who want to drive traffic towards public transport. And we said, okay, every time they touch their Metro card, a citizen taps their Metro card, give them energy tokens. That people can understand. The complicated bit comes in, okay, well now what can I do with that token? Obviously I can sell the token on an exchange, or I can redeem it for another public service. Now to do that, the economics have to be right. So the public sector or the local government or the national government have to put such a value on subsidizing 
whatever it may be, free journeys or access to, to uh, public spaces, whatever it may be, they have to put such a focus on that that it's worth subsidizing the token. So if I'm operating a, uh, a metro system and it costs me $5 to use and I'm accepting the token to displace that, as a, as a government, it has to be worth it for me to accept the token and subsidize that travel. So for us, it's all about finding those incentives. We don't spend our time speaking to people trying to get them to reduce their energy consumption. So when, when we're, uh, I mentioned at the start, uh, we have an existing business which manages and trades energy on behalf of large corporates. I, I don't want to speak to the sustainability manager necessarily. I want to speak to the finance director and I'll say, okay, instead of, do you want to do this thing because it's really cool and it'll help the environment? We say, do you want to partake in the scheme because you might save a million dollars from paying on your energy bill? Now, right or wrong, in our opinion, we're not here to, to make a moral judgment on what motivates humans. What we are here to do is to say, we need to stop pretending that human beings are not motivated by money, and we need to start working within that infrastructure in our economic and incentive models. So that's what we're trying to do uh, at Energy Mine and, and through the Energy Token Project. I wanted to fast forward, uh, fast forward a little bit on some of the projects that we're working on. Uh, to show the end goal. So the energy token project uh, I briefly spoke to you about, which is a sort of the reward mechanism. Where, what Energy Mine is spending a lot of time doing is building a peer-to-peer uh, -peer energy trading platform. Obviously our background is in trading. That's not probably something you've heard about before. There's a dozen, half a dozen people around the world working on it. Um, what we, our version of peer-to-peer -peer starts off as human-to-human. -human very quickly it becomes machine to machine. And what I mean by that is, you know, I've got solar panels on my roof and a battery. I should be able to sell that excess energy from my battery to my neighbor who has a different demand profile for me, human to human. What comes next is with the rollout of billions and billions of IoT devices, is each one of those devices has to have, has its own ability to trade energy. So for example, you know, you want your electric car charged up by 7 a.m. in the morning. But you, and you want your washing done by 6 a.m. in the morning so you can go to work. Now, it's not realistic for me to expect each one of you to start playing with a mobile phone app and trading energy. You're not going to do that. But what you might do is you might set a parameter like you do with a thermostat and say, OK, well, I don't care when those devices get energy from the grid. I just want them to be done by 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. Now, in the background, an algorithm is, is matching all those buys and sells in an economy. So you might set the parameter, I want the cheapest price, and I want my washing done by 6 a.m. Now your washing machine and your electric vehicle will be controlled by, will be trading energy on an algorithm, and Energy Mind is building that platform on which every kilowatt hour uh, will be traded. Again, this central theme to us is we're trying to incentivize renewable energy investment without actually talking about it. And what I mean by that is, you know, I've been very fortunate to speak to some very large investors, billionaires, in this project, and I never speak to them about saving the planet. A lot of investors that I speak to, rightly or wrongly, they care about returns, financial returns. So that's what we speak to the investors about. And we said, okay, well, if this is the global demand for electricity, this is how big we're in a $2 trillion market for traded electricity. And if, if uh, humans and machines are trading on our exchange, this is the kind of returns we generate. And it's the same thing in getting critical mass for people to use the exchange. So at the moment, what we want to do is get people using the exchange by attracting a financial return on investment for them. So to participate in an exchange, of course, you have to have buyers and sellers. You have to have generators and consumers. So there's not many people that can build a coal-fired power station or a gas-fired power station. So of course we're talking about renewables, we're talking about solar, we're talking about wind. So to get those people to participate in the peer-to-peer -peer exchange, we're now internationalizing that market. So if we are creating a global platform for trading kilowatt hours, we're now incentivizing a, a high net worth individual in China to invest in a solar array in Spain, for example, for the sole reason of chasing financial returns. No other reason. What we're then doing is we're causing people to invest in renewable energy 
which almost as a side effect is reducing CO2 and is pushing people towards renewables. So we don't even make the moral argument here about the reason to invest in renewables. We, we firmly believe by creating the right econ economic model, where we can create a climate where people can invest in renewables solely for financial returns, that is the way um, to ensure that people are heavily uh, investing in renewables. So, a few examples. Uh, I've already spoken about the sort of the transport example. I'm not going to sort of uh, uh, cover that uh, cover that again. But what I wanted to communicate today was this central theme that um, I think that we need to really carefully think about the uh, incentive models and the economic models, rather, that we're uh, um, building in this sector. Are the incentives right? You know, I've, I've come across. Over the last 10 years, I've been fortunate to travel at all sort of corners of the globe, met some super smart people, much smarter than I am, and they're building some really cool stuff. And then I turn around and say, that's great, nobody's going to use it. Why? Because the economic model's not there. So what we can hopefully do is by pairing the public sector, the private sector, uh, and academia, is hopefully build on achievements like this. And, and a really simple example I'll, I'll finish up on. Um, Obviously, we're using the, our token to incentivize energy saving. So I got a call from uh, an um, entrepreneur in Pakistan, in Asia. And they said, OK, we've seen what you guys are doing. I want to use your technology to incentivize people to pick up trash. So you, know, you start to get this effect where people start to see the economic arguments for a certain model. So what they wanted to use the uh, um, incentive scheme for was to get people to pick up trash in their local community and the idea that they'd get rewarded with a token and that becomes cheaper for the local government to reward the tokens than it does to pay people to collect the trash. So you can see, and we've already heard examples of that today in some of the presentations, so you can see that when, when a lot of this technology was developed, and of course, you know, the technology we're talking about is, is 10 years old, but it's really come to prominence in the last uh, sort of two years or so. People really started focusing on the technology. And personally, I've been pitched 100 different blockchains. Our blockchains can do this and talks about it can process this many transactions per second. I'm thinking, great, where's the economic model behind it? for mass adoption. Who's going to be using it? Why would they use it? So that's what sort of we're concerned with. And I would, um, I, I love this word collaboration. Um, I hear it so many times and it's become very fashionable to use it. Everybody wants to collaborate. Very few people actually are collaborating in my experience. People love to talk about collaboration because it's fashionable, it's cool to do it. Very few people are doing it. And that's because um, it's really difficult. It's really difficult to align incentives between government and the private sector. But hopefully, conferences like this, institutions that are here today, will really understand what we need to do to solve this problem because we just cannot afford to continue on the trajectory that we're on um, in solving this problem. So that's what I had to say. I wanted to thank everyone for the time. I am around this afternoon if anyone wants to ask any questions. But uh, thank you very much for listening and uh, yeah, happily take any questions later. Thank you.